let's walk through these archetypes and, yeah. and how you That's discover these archetypes. Yeah, so we've got these seven, and we really think about it that we are all all seven, just in unequally distributed ways, right? So I've got some strengths, I've got some weaknesses, mm -hmm. um, and everything in between. So the the seven are, and uh, and there's an archetype and a behavior that attaches to it. So the first one is the convener, right? And the convener's behavior is to know how to hold space, to create an environment where people feel comfortable. And when conveners do that, and people come into that space, they're more apt to share. They're more apt to tell you how they feel. They're more apt to kind of drop into a state of comfort. And that's how conveners gain empathy, right? That's how they understand the folks in the room uh, or the folks in the retail store or the folks in the whatever the setting is that they've created. The seeker is daring. They're confident. They're unafraid to take risks or to pivot. They're entrepreneurial. That They know that about themselves. They know their limit. They know when they're pushing up against that limit. They know what it feels like to like take the one big step beyond that and to learn and grow. And they know what it feels like when other people are pushing up against that. And they can use that insight to help them move along. The alchemist is an experimenter. They're a tweaker of the formula. They're a prototyper. Um, it's actually one of my least uh, natural ways of being. Um, and I've spent a lot of time with, with that archetype in particular, trying to in, improve my deftness with that. Uh, the confidant is a listener. They know how to really listen to hear you. They're not listening, planning what they want to say, which is what most people do, but they're actually <laughs> like listening to genuinely hear what you have to say. The inquirer is a deep question asker. They know how to ask the, the real question under the superficial one to get to the, the, the heart of the matter. The cultivator is a big picture person. They see the, the big goal. The, I think of them sometimes like a, like a farmer. A farmer doesn't plant a seed and expect to sow it tomorrow. Right. They know it's going to take tending and it's going to take water and it's going to take fertilizing. And eventually this thing will come. And knowing that big picture and being inspired by that motivates them. But it also helps them bring that into the present so that other people can connect with that and understand it as well. And then the last one's the sage. And the sage is about being present. Uh, they don't come into the room thinking about what they did five minutes ago, nor are they sitting in the room thinking about what they're going to do next. They just have the capacity to really hold space and be in a space with a person. And in so doing, that presence creates a sense of connection that allows them to understand folks better. And the book has a great exercise. If you just heard those archetypes, you're wondering, yeah. how do I know which one I am? A great exercise <clears throat> to work through. So pick up a copy of the book and dig in a little bit, because I, I do feel like these, much to that educator's point, you know, we've been saying this for years, these are not skills learned in school. These are not nope. areas that are covered in school, but emotional intelligence is where your career lies. Being able to understand and communicate more effectively with humans leads to management, leads to career success. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and it, it it is, I believe, a muscle that takes practice, right? That's like any muscle, if you don't work it, it's gonna atrophy. Empathy can be treated like a muscle that the more you work with it, the more you keep it in your, your frontal mind for a period of time, uh, the more natural and, and, and uh, embodied it starts to become. And then you don't have to presently think about it. You're just doing it. Now, you talk about members of your team and we all have these strengths and weaknesses, but obviously we want to improve we want to strengthen the skill of empathy in general. And some of our listeners are struggling with connection. They maybe only have a few people in their life where they can have that deeper connection with, but it's not something that comes naturally. So what can we do to cultivate empathy in ourselves? And how do you train some of your team members who maybe struggle in this area? Mm -hmm. We start with uh, using the archetypes. We start with having you just self-identify where are your strengths and weaknesses it's super easy right it's 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 I, I jokingly refer to it sometimes as like the gateway drug for empathy right just just start with that can you look at these seven archetypes and say what's the one or two that for me i just innately naturally feel good at and there will for everyone be one of those i i've not met a person yet and if, and if you're one of those people who is saying, I'm not any of those, you're being hard on yourself. I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you there's one that is more prominent than the well, other they're going to find you on social yeah. media and they'll, they'll prove it to you. <laughs> It'll at least be more prominent than the other ones. So let's put it that way. Um, but being able, so on a, on a team, what we ask our team to do is to figure out where do you, where do your strengths lie and how are you playing to them? Right. Because you might actually find that you're a great convener and you haven't been doing anything right. that is sort of touching on that. But like you, you know, you, you've actually been really trying to, you know, write great questions, but you're a terrible inquirer. Right. So let's figure out where our strengths and weaknesses lie and then let's play to our strengths and work on improving our weaknesses and just do it for yourself to start. Because if you can start to have 
empathy for you, you no one understands you better than you right? right so start with understanding you more fully and taking that understanding to other people and people pick up on it too when when someone goes through this work and starts to realize that they are more aware of themselves people will ask what are you doing why why are you like you, you seem different lately or like there's more confidence yeah. <laughs> in you or there's more this or there's more that and that's because they've they've switched in they've clicked into something different inside themselves and that will then open the door for them to have a conversation with someone else.